Hi guys, welcome to this video on how to cut and paste an image from the internet into 2D Design for your CAD CAM mirror. First of all, I need to open 2D Design, so you can either click on the icon here, double click there, or on the school computers you can type 2D into a search box down here and it will find it for you. You will end up with this particular file and this is how it should look. Now, what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to change this background. This is actually A3, which is much, much bigger than your CAD CAM mirror is going to be. And to do that, we're going to go to Setup, Load Setup, and we're going to go and find the area on the school network where the actual um, settings are saved. So we're going to go to Student Shared, Read, Design and Technology, Year 7, CAD CAM Mirror. And then we need to choose whether it's landscape or portrait that our particular mirror is going to um, sit in in terms of its orientation. So for mine, I'm going to click portrait and click open. Now, straight away, you will see not only has the white background changed in its size, but it's also surrounded now by pink. And that's a very easy indication for both you and your teacher to see that you're on the correct setup. Now what we have is an area that is the size of an A5 piece of paper. This is the limit in terms of how big your mirror needs to be. So check with your teacher that you have the correct background if you're not sure, but if it shows pink, it should be correct. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to go and find the image that we want to use. Now for my particular example, I'm just going to do something nice and simple with a, a teddy bear. Now I've got here my searches that I've already done for teddy bear images but I just want to draw your attention to a couple of things here. First of all you can see I've looked for teddy bear but I've followed it with the two words line drawing and what that does is it means that rather than getting photographs of teddy bears which could be very difficult for this software to work with we've got very simple drawings that are actually made up of lines. Now this is ideal for the laser cutter because the cutter itself won't colour anything, it's simply going to use colours to know where to cut and where to engrave. So we only need those simple lines. The alternative, if we can't find anything with the line drawings, is we can search for clip art. And although these are coloured drawings, they tend to be much, much simpler drawings than things like photographs. So again, you can see on some of these nice simple drawings. But I'm actually going to go for one of these um, examples here, so I'm going to perhaps pick this one and I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy the image. Now I go back to my 2D design drawing, I right click and I paste. Now first of all you'll notice that the image has appeared and it's much much bigger than I want it to be. It's got to fit in that white background. So over here on the right I can click on either the plus or minus um, zoom and I can actually reduce that down so that I can make my picture fit in. Now when I select this, which you would do with a black arrow and click on the drawing, I can actually move it by clicking in the middle and then I can just drag with my mouse to actually get that to move into that particular position. Now what I'm going to do is shrink it and these other little things around here are called handles and I can use them to flip my picture up or down and I can flip the other way although this particular one is almost symmetrical so you can't really see any difference there. I could even copy if I wanted and get a second picture of the teddy bear. Okay now for now I'm going to click on the black arrow, select my image, and I'm going to shrink this corner so that it actually fits in my bit of paper on my background. Now, I'm going to just show you for, for um, the sake of it, just to show you how this could work out. Now, that clearly doesn't work at all. If I shrink it like that, it's made my teddy bear very tall and thin. So I'm going to go to Edit, Undo, and this time I'm going to hold Shift on my keyboard down and not let go while I click this and shrink my image. Now the reason for that is that shift will then keep the teddy bear to the correct proportion. So you can see it's not got fat, it's not got thin, okay, it's actually the same sort of shape. And so now I can zoom in and I can now perhaps reposition my teddy bear so it's a bit more central. Now 
the next thing that I need to do is I need to convert this drawing because this is a bitmap made up of many pixels that are coloured and I actually need to make it into a vector that are made up of generally lines and circles. So I'm going to go to the command bitmaps and vectorize bitmap. I'm going to click on my teddy bear drawing and then I've got this window that appears in front of me. Now I'm going to go for monochrome. You'll remember probably the word mono means singular one. Well the singular I'm going to go for is going to be black. So it's black or white in a sense. Okay, I can now use this slider to actually find a position where I think my image is at its clearest. And you can see mine looks like an eye stock image so I've got those little bits of text but if I just carefully use the slider I can get to a point there where I've got a really nice clear drawing and it looks like it's basically the best I think I'm going to get. So at that point I'm going to click OK and click OK again. Now that didn't take very long. For some of you the images you choose may not convert very well and it might take two or three goes with cutting and pasting images off the internet into this template until you actually get one that converts as well as mine did. But you can see with mine I've still got that really nice clear image of a teddy bear. It's very very um, crystal in terms of black and white so I can carry on with my particular design. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the teddy bear and I'm going to go to this command here where it says fill and I'm going to click no fill and click apply and what that's done is it's taken away all of the paint as we call it that's inside this particular image and leaves me with just the lines so just to remind you that's what I'm looking for for the laser cutter the laser cutter when we finished will follow these lines all the way around and will cut out some and draw on others depending on how we set it up now the way the laser cutter knows which is which is by the colour. At the moment all the lines are black so if I were to send this to the laser cutter like that it would cut every single one of these lines out. Of course the trouble with that is I'd end up with nothing more than a fantastic jigsaw puzzle. So I need to actually decide which ones I'm going to colour so that they're just drawn on to help me paint it or to, uh, to decorate it later and then which ones I actually want it to cut out. And part of that is going to be about deciding whereabouts my mirror is going to go. So I want to be able to select different parts. So I need to actually break this image up and to do that I'm going to explode it. So edit, explode. Now just click continue and now my teddy bear has actually changed from being one object to being lots of different objects that I can select separately. Now it does sound a bit brutal exploding a teddy bear um, but that's what it does it breaks it apart into lots of different drawings which I can deal with separately which is really great if I want to change colours of different bits. Now mine I'm going to cut out around the outside and I'm going to make this central bit here in the torso I'm going to make that into a mirror. Most of it then is going to be red which is the colour that the laser cutter will use to recognise what it's going to engrave. So actually to save myself some time I'm going to click and drag a box right over the top of the teddy bear. So let me just remind you there I've got the little black arrow and I'm clicking, not letting go of my mouse, dragging it over the whole thing and then letting go. And I'm going to go up to this command here where it says line and colour, that's what the CL stands for. Click on colour, click on red, click OK. The whole teddy bear has now turned red. Now to get the outside to cut out I'm going to click on the outside and you can see it's gone pink because it selected that line but it is just the line around the outside and I'm now going to go to line and colour and change that to black and when I click away you will now see the outside of my teddy bear is black the inside is red so the laser cutter will know to cut around the outside and draw on the lines in red so as we said before I'm going to change this bit here I'm going to turn that into my mirror so I'll obviously need to cut a hole there for the mirror to go in place so again where it says line color I'm going to click black 
click OK. And then just for a bit of a novelty, I'm going to click on the eyes and I'm going to turn those black as well so that I can have two mirrors for the eyes. Now, when I'm selecting more than one thing, I can click on one, hold shift and click on the other. And you can see I can select more than one thing at the same time. So now where it says line color, back in black, click OK. There we go. Now that is a file that is set up ready to actually be laser cut. And I can actually print this as normal on an ordinary printer. And as a bit of a test, I'm going to get a pair of scissors and I'm actually going to cut out every single black line. It's a really good test because if I've made any mistakes, perhaps some lines may be black when they should be red or maybe some are red when they should be black, then I will spot it when I do my little test. And what I'd like you to do when you've had that printed is to paste it into your book and if there were any developments, any things that you had to change, I'd like you to annotate that. Just write a few notes down. It's fine to make mistakes. The most important part is to show that we recognise them and that actually we can make the alterations to improve our designs. So I will now print this, cut it out, all the black lines with a pair of scissors, including these in the centre, just to make sure that I will get what I want out of a piece of paper. And if I do, that means it will work on a piece of MDF. OK, now you can watch my next video, which will show you how to actually go about setting up a contour, which is a line around the outside if your design is a little bit more complicated than my teddy bear and actually ends up where you can't really select a single line that's easy for you to use. OK, thanks for watching.